Everybody, Chris Starr. Thank you. I'm not really a creative. I'm a creative producer, and I want to tell you how that happened. I first came to Charleston to go to the College of Charleston about 30 years ago. I fell in love with that place. I took, took a degree in math, did a Fortran class, became a programmer. This is where I, I decided I gotta have my life here. I, uh, I played my outdoor sports, went to MUSC, dated a little while here, <laughs> met, met, my, met my wife. She's sitting over here, hey, Dylan. Yeah, had four kids, got married, reverse that. She's, she's the creative other half in me, for sure. We've been married like 28 years, which explains the boat. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of water, Charleston is the best place for software creatives because at noon you can go and push the kayak into the harbor and have some fun and they go program from midnight to three. This is, <laughs> these are some of the boats that I've been playing in all my life and I've got dreams too. <laughs> the Mirabella there. These, these people have inspired me too, thinking about the ideas they bring to the software creative class. I love the idea that the creatives can rise to the top now with Richard Florida's idea and the idea that we're working in a global space, that crowds can participate in solutions, and that memes, technology is even part of the human evolutionary process. Well, back at 30 years ago, we could produce software creatives with a Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Science at the college. But when those students graduated, they had to leave Charleston because there was no way to find a job here. There were like six of us who could program in Charleston. That was it. Yeah, things have changed, though, in the establishment of that pipeline, which I'm glad to say. And I want to tell you a little bit about that. The next thing that we did was increase the quality of our programs by getting our, our undergraduate program accredited at the college and then offering a master's degree in Computer Science for all the working professionals out there in our community. So that was our next step. Then, after creating the master's degree, we thought there's got to be something else. Um, how do we make this code, which is gorgeous to me, this is aesthetically beautiful, <laughs> look beautiful to the rest of you? How can we make this creative stuff that we do visible to people? So that's the, the, the mission I'm on the rest of my life, making code uh, the most beautiful thing you can see. That's a little Twitter application. So we, what I did was I developed this thing called the Software Innovations Lab, where I take some of my best students at the College of Charleston, some of which are sitting back there running this show. Good job, guys. <laughs> and then we, we find ideas that may be innovations and try to figure out how to protect our intellectual property and get out there to market so that the creative people can own their intellectual property. Next came a Bachelor of Arts degree production in Computing and the Arts, where we mashed together art and music, art and theater, um, and art and uh, drama. The idea is to put together in the right and the left halves of the brains something new and creative in computationalist. Love how we build community around uh, of tech people too, including, of course, Parliament here. Uh, Bar Camp, which comes up on October 22nd. Don't miss Bar Camp. Yeah, thank you there. And then soon, I think we'll have a TEDx here in Charleston as well. So that'll be great. Yep. We're, we're looking forward to that. So if you want to join in, do so. In addition to those groups, we have 21 other technical groups that meet in Charleston, like the Association for Commuting Machinery, and there's even a, a Java working group, a .NET group, and this is important for a creative community. You need professionals who can get together and share what they know and build more business for the economy. All right. These are the big game changers that make Charleston a place for creatives to be. Of course, in the technology sector, we've got things like Scratch, which is a language that's built for fifth graders, so they can learn how to program, too. We've got like cloud computing, so you don't have to buy infrastructure, you can rent it in the cloud today. And then things that are coming up, like our 3D interfaces and quad-core processors. My department also stood up a non-credit facility so that you don't have to go to college to learn something. Let's say this weekend you want to spin up on Ruby so that you can start a new job. Well, come see us on Saturday so that we can get you spun up quickly in a new technology. This will help revolutionize people's transition between creative industries. What I'm working on now with Deborah up there in the audience is a digital media center. We want a public-private partnership where we can take research ideas right out of the software industry and put them into a commercial space as quickly as we can. So we're building partnerships right now with MUSC, the Citadel, Clemson, uh, and the college to do so. And here's some examples from MUSC that we're uh, considering 
already. One is to apply game engines in serious ways like medical simulations. And can you imagine using motion capture to help Parkinson's patients figure out if they're making progress with their treatments, something more quantitative, and even using like digital video for patient-informed consent. So what I see is the confluence of so many things coming together in Charleston to make this the place to move to, like Richard Florida would say. We've got a great history, an amazing culture. We've, we've got the water out there. We've got real estate prices that are way lower than San Francisco, if you've noticed. Uh, and educational institutions and people like you. And the result has been, now the students who graduate from the College of Charleston in software, they don't have to move out anymore. They can go to work here in Charleston at any number of places. Yes. <laughs> That's what I like too. And Blue Ion, I want to plug you there. <laughs> what we still need to keep a focus on is mass transportation, excellent public education systems, good local coffee shops and breweries and places to eat, and green spaces that can be funded by our taxes, and of course support the music and arts education programs in school systems. All right, I, I used to have this vision that Charleston's going to be like the San Francisco of the East. But after the, the Condé Nast announcement, I'm, thinking that hope, I'm hoping that maybe one day in San Francisco, they'll be thinking, God, this is like the Charleston of the West. <laughs> all right, so let's put it all together. We've had 30 years of development in the software industry in Charleston. Let's put what we know into action so that we can get pumped up about the creatives for Charleston Computes. Thanks.